Hello and welcome back. So today's the day guys. If you've been following my videos over the last few days, then you'll know that I've moved up to Yorkshire. I've moved in with Keegan. It's all going very well so far. I'm finding myself settling into life up here more and more, which is good. However, lots of my stuff is just dumped in the spare bedroom, which will double as, you know, mainly be spare bedroom vibes, but I'll have like my little desk here. But yeah, I've still got to unpack a whole load of things and it needs to be done today, really. I want to get it done today. I just feel a little bit overwhelmed, don't know where to start. But from what I've read to this morning, I read something that said, if you've got a job to do that you keep procrastinating on, just do five minutes of it because the chances are you'll end up completing it and just doing the whole thing. So I'm in my head I'm just going, I'm going to tidy for five minutes, but hopefully I'll be up here for a while sorting. Where do I start? I've got my YouTube plaque. This is the one for the Joel and Leah channel. Um, can't wait to get my own one for this channel and have two. One here, one here. I'll probably put them up on the wall at some stage, but I'll just leave that there. Oh, I know a good first job actually. Open up these hangers and uh, that then gives me some things to hang clothes on. If you watched yesterday's video, you'll remember me and Keegan were talking about his Abercrombie bottles. There he is. You can see the photo on the back. So I've got two of those. Lovely. Guys, I have gotten so distracted today because just after I started tidying, basically a new project that Leah and I are working on, which you guys will see very soon, maybe even as soon as tonight, I'm not sure. Basically our editor got back to us with something that we've been working on. So I had to proof watch that. I've been going back and forth with Leah about what we're doing now <laughs> and you know, all the planning behind that channel. Um, plus then I had a call from a mortgage advisor, another mortgage advisor, I've spoken to three now. I was on the phone for a good half an hour and I'm still like, I want to put an offer in on the property I saw yesterday and I told the estate agent I would um, today but there's still some things to sort out with my company and the structuring of it, really boring stuff like legally that has to be done. Um, something to do with company because I'm buying it through my company but because my company is like an entertainment company, the mortgage advisor is saying I need a separate company, a new company just to do with property. I can't do it through the same company. Whereas my accountant is saying something slightly different where they're like, we will like adapt this company and change it into sort of two, like an offshoot, and then you can do it through that. So the mortgage advisor and my accountant are at odds with each other and I'm like, I don't know what to do. All I wanna do is put an offer on this house. Someone tell me, can I do that yet? <laughs> so anyway, sorting out all that boring stuff. Plus me and Keegan went for a walk. Here's some footage. We've just come for a little dog walk in the middle of the day. Keegan is in a very fun outfit. It's uh, gloves. He was wearing a hat. I was not wearing a hat. Oh, hood up, it's, massive coat and shorts. It was, it's practical meets sporty meets north of England. <laughs> Welcome to the north, everyone. Slay, slay, slay. Slay, slay, slay. <laughs> So just got back from a walk now and and then I'm trying to sort out other things. For example, the girl that's moving into my room, Lucy messaged to say she wants to, uh, she has a car and she wants to park there. But in London, you can only have two cars per household or two permits per household. So I've had to go and be in touch with the council in London to cancel my permit and hopefully get a refund on some of it. And there's just loads more stuff like that to do, guys. I've got to change doctors, change dentists, change Ava's vets. There's a whole list of things, which because I've been so busy at the start of this week with uh, filming YouTube videos and doing property viewings and uh, getting my moles removed and all those sorts of things, all of the organization stuff has taken a back seat. So I really need to get organized today and tomorrow. But I'm like, oh, already most of the day is gone. This is the thing, guys. When you spin like a hundred plates, I'm like, what on earth do I focus on? I think whilst I'm waiting for a reply from my accountant, I will forget about the property. Forget about that. I'm waiting for a reply from Leah as well. So I'll forget about John and Leah stuff for the moment. I think I'll crack on with doing some more tidying until one of those people get back to me and then I can do that. I mean, it's probably not the best way to work. I've heard that the best way to work is to like knuckle down, really focus on one task for like an hour, but in my life, I was gonna say my line of work, but in my life in general, I just have plates spinning everywhere. Even mum and dad, when I was talking to them about the property, they were like, the thing is, you have so many plates spinning, as long as you're ready to like add property to it, then fine, but um, they also know I like keeping busy and I like the craziness. <laughs> I'm 
guys. So this big box here is my office chair that I bought. Now I really didn't know what to go for guys, whether to go for like a really nice bougie office chair or to go for like a comfortable one or an ergonomic one or like a gaming one and basically I've gone for quite a big, <laughs> this might be too big guys, um, a gaming chair. I don't know why, it just looked very comfy and very nice. I mean it's designed for gamers, people who play video games for hours every day so I'm like it's got to be very comfortable and it looks quite cool but I'm not a gamer and I probably only sit on the chair for like an hour a day. <laughs> because I can't sit still, but we'll see. It's taken me a while and I'm still not done. I'm just trying to attach the backrest to it. I've actually never put together an office chair before, but it's actually very simple. But so far, I know it's not together yet, but I'm like, I really like it, really like it. So that's good news because it was blooming expensive. It was just under 300 pounds. I think it was like 275 or something. Guys, it is done. I mean, it'll be nice for you guys to see it when the room is tidy, but I love it. It's like a black kind of, not even leather, but not quite velvet, just, I don't know, it's a very nice material. They did different colors. It's very comfortable. I can lean it all the way back, so I'm basically lying down, which is cool, and that comes back up. Obviously, it can go up and down, and it can do other things, but to be honest, I'm not gonna use it. It's got lumbar support, so that this nozzle on the side, if I twist it, um, I can feel this pumping up, and supporting my lumbar a bit. And then equally, if I twist it the other way, it pumps down. Very cool. Anyway, time to keep tidying. That took long enough. Another box, which is great. That was under the desk chair. Um, so I'm making progress, but I'm like, oh my gosh, a lay. Fantastic, when am I gonna use that? Oh, some new oven gloves which is great, love giraffes. Basically what happened, me and Lucy went to Asda uh, when we first moved in and we bought this exact set of tea towels and oven glove. And then that Christmas, or my birthday, mum didn't realize that we had this and went to Asda and bought these for me for my birthday. And I was like, we already have these. And that's how well my mum knows me. So it's nice because me and Lucy never used them. So they're fresh for here. This is my sponsor child. Igorineza, she lives in Rwanda and um, I sponsor her, I send her money every month. I've been sponsoring her for years now. Um, that's with a charity called Compassion. So a little shout out to them, recommend them if you are looking to do something charitable. More tea towels, an apron, a Great British Bake Off apron. Look how cool this is. This an ex actually bought me, bought this for me. So I think it's one of the only things remaining from an ex, but I absolutely love it, so I couldn't get rid of it. Star Baker. If you know, you know. If you watch Great British Bake Off, you'll understand that. I'm done for the day. It is now 20 to five. So I've done a good couple of hours of sorting out and uh, putting my chair together. So it does look a little bit tidier. Lots of these, like all of those boxes are empty. Yeah, most of the clothes are put away. This is all Ava's dog stuff, so I need to unpack that downstairs. But yeah, still quite a bit to do. But I basically, I need to edit a video now and I need to catch up with messages about John Lear stuff and about mortgages and all those sorts of boring things. So I think I'm gonna get my PJs on, go down to the living room and just sit down with my laptop and do some work. Hey everyone, it's actually the next day, but I realized I didn't really film much yesterday. So I want to give you a bit of a update on the books that I wanna read this year. I've done something different and I've sort of bought all the books that I'm planning on reading this year. Although, will I stick to it? Firstly, will I get through them all? I don't know. Secondly, Will I resist buying new books? Probably not. But I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown. So if you're interested in books, I'm gonna make it really quick, so don't worry. Um, but if you're interested in books, then keep watching. If you're not interested in books, then you can stop watching the video here. Right, so firstly, this is the, the book I just finished reading over the festive period. I read it over December. It's called Merrily Ever After, and I really recommend it. Not for this time of year, but if you want a Christmas book for, you know, later this year, I really, really recommend that. It's really good. I. I can't say it without giving too much away, but basically it's about two reuniting sisters. It's very good. So the one that I'm, I'm sort of dipping into a few books at the moment, but in terms of self-help, I'll go with non-fiction first. I bought a whole bunch of them as were recommended to me by the internet, and so hopefully they're, they're good. This is the one I'm reading at the moment, which is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. I'm only that far in, but I basically have taken a pencil to it and I'm underlining all these lines because there's so much wisdom in this book and as someone who worries a lot, this is really helping. So for example, the technique at the moment that I'm reading in this book is about compartmentalizing and living in day-tight containers. So literally going, can I get through today? Forget about tomorrow and the rest of the year. Can I get through today? Mm, yes, I can. 
that's what I'm learning. But there's loads of other tips and techniques. So I'm loving this. I'm going to read some more of that today. I bought this one as well, The Courage to Be Disliked. Obviously being on the internet and there's trolls and people like that. I think I've realised I am a people pleaser and it really annoys me when people completely misunderstand situations, completely misjudge me as a person and I'm like, why don't you like me? Like everything you're saying about me is just not true. It's just not true. And I'm learning to go, actually, you can think what you like because it literally does not affect me in any way. And just having the courage to be disliked. So I can't give you a review of that, but that is what I'm gonna read. How to talk to anyone. Again, I don't, ha I wouldn't say I've got social anxiety at all. I am quite a confident person externally, but internally in social situations, I do go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what am I gonna say? And then physically, you know, when I've told people, about that they're like really you come across as if you like are so confident which I'm glad about but I just thought this might help me to not have the internal panic this one's cringe think and grow rich so again it's such a cringy one but apparently it's a very popular book it says it's over 15 million copies uh, sold worldwide and it's all about changing your attitude to money so I read rich dad poor dad a few years ago which is also a staple of like if you want to get good with finance and learning about investments and assets the difference between asset and liability just want to get financially like on it this year this one I'm really looking forward to you can't quite see the title because it's embossed it's called quiet and it's basically about the power of introverts and about how society makes you think that if you're an extrovert you're successful success equals extrovert extra equals success and actually this is saying that that's not true most of the most successful people are introverts and the power of being an introvert and the power of being quiet is big large whatever mum and dad bought me this for christmas just one thing and it's one that you can sort of dip into so when you open up the pages it's it's set out like this it's very easy to read just one thing breakfast drink coffee it will tell you the benefits of drinking a cup of coffee every day get some sun all these things which sound really basic but it goes into the science behind it and why you need it so uh, that is going to basically be living next to my bedside table so I can dip in and out of it. This is the one that people wanted recommendations for. When I told you guys I was feeling anxious and instead of going back to therapy, I'm going to read the book that my therapist recommended and try and work on it by myself and then see if I still need therapy because I haven't read this yet. This is the book she recommended, Mindfulness, A Practical Guide for Finding Peace in a Frantic World. A couple more, only two more. Firstly, I've had this book for ages, Unconditional. It's about gays and Christians. It says, rescuing the gospel from the gays versus Christians debate. It's basically encouraging Christians to practice what they preach, which is loving people unconditionally and going through like mistranslations and things in the Bible, which makes Christians think that being gay is wrong when it's not wrong. So I think that that's going to be a really helpful one for me to read just because like I I already believe all that but I don't necessarily have the words and the arguments behind it to argue my point or we shouldn't say argue to state my point so I just want to sort of wise up with that. And then this one that I bought from a charity shop you might have remember from a blog vember vlog stop doing that sh end self sabotage and demand your life back. So again, haven't read it, but I'm going to read it this year. And I'm excited for that. Now, I might have more than this, but this is the fic these are the fiction books that I um, want to read this year. This is the one that I just started. So it's called Part of the Family. And literally, I'm like a few pages in because I started it like two days ago. And it's, it's a thriller. Lots of the books I like to read are thrillers. But it just says, someone is watching, someone she thought she could trust, someone determined to make her pay. The next one is The Missing Girl. And it's basically about a girl who lost her sister when she was younger and then you know, 30 years later, she's like sort of investigating it um, and she thinks her sister hasn't died or something like that. Two more Taylor Jenkins Reads books because my favorite book of last year was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It was so good. I don't know if that's to do with the story or whether it's to do with Taylor Jenkins Read. So I'm gonna give two more of her books a go. Two more guys. Firstly, The Couple at the Table, again, another thriller. It basically says you're on your honeymoon at an exclusive resort and you receive a note of warning saying beware of the couple at the table next to yours and there are five other couples around. So it's sort of like solving a mystery. And then the final one is this, which is The Locked Room, which I believe my mum bought but didn't read so I've, I've taken it and it's something to do with COVID isn't it yeah so it says Ruth and Nelson are on the hunt for a murderer when COVID-19 rears its ugly head but can they find the killer despite the lockdown I'm really excited to read that and like read a bit of fiction but to do with COVID like I don't know I just think it adds a bit more realism doesn't it but anyway these are literally all the books that I want to read this year it's a big task but I believe I'm gonna do it 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Come back tomorrow for another video. I'm going to the Harry Potter Studio tour tomorrow, which I'm so excited about. So you'll see that vlog on Sunday. But yeah, also just to let you know that Joel and Leah are back. We have posted another video on our joint channel and we've basically launched a vodcast, which is a filmed podcast or videoed podcast. We're so excited. It's sort of the next stage of Joel and Leah. Uh, we might do some traveling and bits and bobs. We're still gonna do our UK channel, but for the time being, our channel is taking the form of us just having a chat, guys. Having a laugh, having Prosecco, just having a chat, just two friends having a catch up. So go and watch that. I'll link it up in the cards above my head if you wanna go and have a watch. And apart from that, I'll see you next time. Bye.